Okay, welcome to a new episode of Farm Like a Hero. I'm Richard Perkins. Today I'm here with David Page, who I filmed with on YouTube back in November 2019 at the training he invited me to run over in Croatia. David's taking over responsibilities for his, he's now the CEO of his parents' complex businesses that they've built up as the pioneers of macrobiotic sustainability and organic food in Croatia in the last three decades. Zerno Organic Farm produces vegetables in both the biointensive and the field scale production and has a bakery and food processing kitchen on the farm, as well as the farm to table restaurant in the capital. And alongside that, in the complexity of their businesses, they also have a wholesale organic food distribution company and 16 shops around the company, as well as a book publishing company and employ around 200 people. So David, thanks so much for Join us again today for the tour. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Mm, nice to see you again. And maybe you could tell us a bit about, like a lot of viewers will have seen that video. And if they haven't, I guess they should go back and watch that to get a real good visual look around all of that. But maybe yeah. you could tell us a bit about your journey growing up in that, I guess, and what's been your journey from youth back to being like taking on the responsibilities now and did you expect to to do that always yeah that's uh that's an interesting uh topic um to a certain degree uh in the back of my head i always sort of knew that uh, i wanted to be a part of my uh, the family business right but I would definitely say that the way it happened, I could have not foreseen in terms of what what my participation is today. So, the, you know, my parents basically started their business activities uh, as I was born in terms of trade of organic products. Uh, they started with education and that was happening before me. But you know the the trade aspect the store aspect all of those things sort of started as as i was you know uh, really growing up and i was um, very present uh, at basically you know a lot of the early activities even as a as, you know a toddler or something at the seminars and things like that so the people the early collaborators and and the people that my parents you know the community that they built in those early days of the business that was in more in, in many ways my family in some ways right and so i think in those early days that's where this sort of um you know this sort of uh i would i would call it like um this you know vision you know captured in my mind and in terms of like it was just something that i always felt a part of right mm. but um growing up and you know my parents they didn't want me to uh just sort of um you know just you know start working at, in the company and in the business without you know really being tested myself or really pursuing my own sort of direction or something like that so after high school, I basically went, you know, in a completely different direction and on my own. I, I, uh, I, you know, studied film and TV production in the United States, and then took on philosophy as a double major early on in that study, and then realized that I don't really uh, enjoy the the work style or the lifestyle of film production and. So I did my master's in philosophy at Cambridge. Um, and that was the end of, and, but I also knew that I didn't really want to pursue uh, an academic uh, career. Uh, it mm -hmm. was way too passive for me personally. Uh, but I did, you know, I did carry a, a lot of lessons that, you know, I learned from, from, uh, from film and especially from philosophy into my later work. Um, mm. In particular, I actually think it's worthwhile mentioning. You know, in philosophy, I was I was really fascinated by um, uh, so-called system philosophies. Those are not really done anymore today. Philosophy is a very analytic, reductive discipline. Like you're expected to focus on a particular issue and then really develop that particular issue to the point of even I would call 
I would sometimes call it like even, you know, like ridiculous detail. Like it's mm. not to the point where it's not really useful for anything anymore. But I was more fascinated by, I guess, more historical philosophies that focused on building a system, right? And I think, you know, although I could, couldn't could have foreseen that I would be involved with uh, agriculture or farming later in my life, I think, you know, just as those, those types of um, philosophical systems that try to account for complexity, that's a lesson. Like studying those really helped uh, with mm. running a farm. But in any Which, case... Uh, uh, David, yeah. I want to ask you, sorry to interrupt you. I, we talked about this a lot, I remember, in the car when I was over there, but I've forgotten which college did you read at? I was curious. I was at Robinson College. It's one of the, one of the newer colleges. But since I did uh, uh, my uh, MPhil, which is like a research master's at Cambridge, it wasn't really, um, I, I only, you know, my dorm was at Robinson, but I wasn't, you know, really in the tutorship of the, of the college. It was more of a sort of like an independent uh, research program. Mm -hmm. it's sort of it, it, it's it's in uh, in broad terms it's sort of like a it's a leeway into a phd study you, you can basically continue on to a phd yeah. so and you was, skipped out of that you didn't want to do the phd the, the great thing about this program about this was that it was a one-year program so it was very intense and it is very intense but you don't really commit too much time but you do independent research so it's sort of like and then when you do a phd you obviously you know do independent research over a very long period of time mm -hmm. and i admired that a lot but for me personally it was just i knew that it, it was too static for me mm -hmm. and too hermetic as well um and, and also, I, I realized that if I pursued that direction, this was a funny thing that I realized the other day, I would have probably completed my PhD this year or like a couple of months ago, <laughs> which, just, which just, you know, like visualizing everything that has been done in the last four uh, years of my professional work, it's just Hard unimaginable. It, <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's, it's unimaginable, really. But yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, the the development of the family business uh, in 2010, um, my parents they they knew and they you know they they really wanted to pursue you know this idea of you know vertical integration. They didn't want to stop at trade or retail, mm. um, not only because you know, those were not the original activities that they started with, as they started with, you know, education and, and cooking workshops and so on, but also because they knew that from a professional business standpoint, um, you know, it's much easier to replicate stores and trade than it's in compared to production, right? Like production yeah. is much harder to figure out, much, it requires in some terms more in investment and it requires it's highly different... nuanced and yeah in that way yeah 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 so so the idea of the farm the zirna farm uh you know it was founded back in the late 80s and the lady that founded it and ran it she was in the community that my you know in general community uh, that my parents were in as well but then in 2010, we, my parents basically, or the company, bought the farm business. And um, then my father ran it for about five, six years from that point. Um, and then when I finished my time at Cambridge, I basically went into it. And uh, it was not maybe, you know, like my... It sounds like a like a cute story, but the reality of it is that you know my parents asked me like you know what would you want to do in the business, and I I was never it, sorry just to interrupt yeah. you again. Were you making a conscious choice to come back into it then? Yeah, as opposed to them asking you. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a nice way to wrap that up. Yeah, it it was a con conscious choice, and I think mm. that's very important. I think actually because for you know. 
my particular context because I, at that point, I knew that there would never be any regrets or what ifs, you know, like mm -hmm. I, I did my thing, I explored it, you know, I had, you know, different sort of avenues of pursuing it further, both film and philosophy, and I made a conscious choice to do this. So there's no like, I cannot, you know, there's, I cannot hide be behind something like, oh, I, I didn't have a choice or I was, you know, no, I made a choice. Like this is, yeah. you know, clear. <laughs> this is my responsibility it's not you know it's not anyone else's um but in any case i asked like um you know i i replied to that question of what i want what would you like to do i said like what is most needed right where where would i be most needed um and zerno organic farm was the was the obvious answer mm -hmm. So what's that, how would you describe your role today? So I, I'm the CEO of the company that operates the farm and the restaurant that is tied to the farm and carries the same brand. I oversee uh, processes, uh, operations, um, um, financials, and you know, all, you know, most aspects of the business. Yeah. yeah and how would you say that like something that's always impressed me deeply with you david is just the i don't know what the right descriptor would be like like the stoic kind of presence you have and the responsibility you've taken on is huge and i think if anyone goes back to that youtube video or certainly i know farmers friends made a, a video early in this year didn't they that's yeah a lot more beautiful cinematography and yeah. and i think people can see quite clearly from that it's a it's a dynamic complex business ecosystem that you're sort of in and you i'm a, i'm guessing your upbringing within that means you have you know a know-how of the workings of that and from your parents obviously that allow you to navigate that complexity much easier than anyone external could possibly do yeah yeah that's that's true is that a good analysis on on a simple level yeah i think I, I think it is um because, well i was leading on to asking like how how was that coming back from quite different studies and looking out into the world in a very different way to coming back into that role overseeing a lot of people who have worked there obviously a long time and this whole process and having your own inspiration ideas about the farm like i can imagine that'd be quite overwhelming right but you seem very centered and very well balanced and I, measured with it all I, it, it might appear that way, and I, I think to a degree it is true. I did have, of course, you know, uh, in the first moments I had, you know, a lot of doubts about my capabilities. Like I remember, you know, coming from Cambridge, I was, you know, I had a lot of worries that I wouldn't, you know, how would I do this or that or how would I encompass this or, you know, what do I have in my previous experience to really, you know, show for. But um, somehow throughout my upbringing like involuntarily and indirectly they, i say that because I, I i know that my parents didn't want me to have this sort of mindset of responsibility in fact like an they obligation were, or... yeah yeah they they were I, I know they were explicitly worried at different moments in time about you know me just being so burdened by all of it you know the business of it you know i was but it just it was something that was um you know uh, uh something that was a reality for me and and um and that's just sort of grew with with time and um i i, I know explicitly that they you know there were you know times in, in my you know childhood when they would you know just like be worried that i wasn't you know like as relaxed as they thought that you know other kids are or you know or you know <laughs> it, it was just sort of there was this i guess there was this sort of um layer you know that was just in, in you know there that was tied to the businesses and things like that and then 
I personally, you, you mentioned the word stoic, but I personally have, I have been inspired by stoics throughout uh, my, even before my philosophical studies, but I've, you know, uh, re read them all, in fact, and, and have been quite, uh, inspired and and in my personal sort of um, uh, life philosophy, I have found that um, a lot of anxiety can be short circuited if well, a person doesn't um, doesn't uh, run after the questions question of you know what do I want or what you know those those questions basically or at least for me personally they lead into a dead end I, I i found that you can short circuit them if you ask about what needs to be done right you know what is required what is you know what ought to be you know what you know and, the, and the things seem much clearer when you when i ask myself that question you know okay.